So welcome back. It is another week, and I'm Mouse. And I'm Azzy. And we are here today to review Starry Night's new album called Here Lies. Um, just to give some background information on the album. So A Starry Night, um, they're local to Florida. So um, we're good friends. They live over in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, as Obscura and Dead DJs, we open for them many times over hey, the years. You just opened for them on a live stream a couple weeks back. I did, yes. You're right. I actually forgot about that. Because <laughs> um, the time moves differently when you're in quarantine. Uh, but but yeah, uh, so A Starry Night is a really cool four piece out of Miami. Um, they have a lot of uh, dark wave and post punk influences. And their new release comes out on Friday, May 8th. May 8th on Negative Gain Productions. Right. This is, um, gosh, what album number is this? Uh, I think four. I was going to say this. I think this is number four. Yeah. Um, so um, <clears throat> just open Discog. Um, their first one was called Stereo Waltz in 2014. Uh, and then Until the End of the Moon and then Midnight Conversations, which was just a couple of years back. And um, so here lies. Uh, and... A Starry Night has always had like this visual identity. Like they've always been like, the music is always like super romantic, like drenched in sadness. So it's just extra with the, uh, with the emotions. And this album is no different. Um, everything from the lyrics to um, the, the layering of instruments and the composition, it's just full force, extra, 110%. And um, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think this album is one of their best. It's I think probably this their album best. is their, is this definitely is their, this is their best, their this is their best, best album. Yeah. So, they, um, you know, when you listen to something, like it just came out. So we've been listening to it. And um, I know I have to get used to some of the songs, but I'm just super giddy and excited about. Uh, the songs that I'm hearing um, and comparing them to sounds that I've heard before when I first started listening to like um, like just airy ethereal like dark wave and post punk and all of that so there's a lot of um, retro influences in this more so than I've, I've felt have, that I've been on any other album that they've done I don't think it's just the 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 retro influences like the songs just feel fuller like there's Definitely there's more fuller. to them there's there's something in the way that they're written or mastered that it just feels like there's just more to this album to experience um in that sense i don't know if i'm describing this properly i, I think but you are I'm and i i think i know what you're talking about because um uh, all of the songs, like I, I hear um, a lot of layering. I hear a lot of instruments. So it's not just the guitar and the bass and all of that stuff and the drums. They have pianos. They have like they have jingle bells and leave the winter jingle on the ground. And like all of the like wavy atmosphere that you would hear, but it's all fully fleshed out and mastered well. So um, fun fact, this album was mastered by Jason Corbett of Actors and he is a great name to have um, working on your mastering. Um, and I think that he, he definitely was there to help keep all those sounds from muddying up each other. You could hear everything um, pretty well balanced. Uh, so there were a couple of tracks I wanted to talk about. Um, the first three tracks, like I can just listen to those forever. Um, Leave the Winter on the Ground was the first track. And it really, like, I have to say that it reminds me of Killing Joke. Like, just with the way the the guitars start off and the way that they sound so plucky, but, like, wavy at the same time, just reminds me of Love Like Blood. And I can, I can just imagine, like, the waving flags and the blowing 
everything. Like it's just got this iconic atmosphere to it. Um, it I think it sets the tone for the rest of the album. Um, it's just romantic and expressive, passionate post-punk. Um, I really like the jingle bells. The jingle bells. The yeah. jingle bells are great. And, and you know that's so Michael. Like, that's so it's, Michael. It's um, the sparkling jingle bells. Can you imagine if he was like, um, what's that one Christopher Watkins skit where he's like, needs more cowbell? I can imagine Michael just going, needs more jingle bell. <laughs> Instead of cowbell, needs more jingle <laughs> bell. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, that's I really want to talk about Michael and um, his obsession. Ob- obsession with Christmas. Michael is obsessed with Christmas. Or, or let's say we're all excited about Christmas when he starts talking about it. <laughs> like he'd be like, oh, there, there's 237 days left till Christmas. Oh, he actually posted that. There's 237 <laughs> sleeps left until Christmas or something <laughs> yes. like that. Yeah. So you know somebody's giving him tons of Christmas presents. Uh, so the second track on this album uh, called Paint the Stars Tonight. Um, this one to me was very Cocktoo Twins-esque. Um, uh, it's a slower ballad, um, very ethereal wave, like airy early 90s when there was just this cross between dark wave and alternative and this was also very visual appealing, visually appealing. Um, there are uh, lyrics for all of the songs that are going to be available when the album drops on May 8th. <clears throat> You'll be able to see those on Bandcamp. And uh, every song has like a standout lyric uh, that like just gets stuck in your head. Yeah, what was it for you on Paint the Stars tonight? I can't remember. <laughs> I didn't write it down. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, now drop that lyric. And I'm like, what? Where, where did it go in my notes? I don't remember. <laughs> when it starts, I'll start singing it again. Like I'll just like throw the track on and I'll start singing it. <laughs> um, but this track is um, like again, like all of the tracks because of the way that they're designed to have that retro early 90s feel I could just see these music videos in my head like I can picture like that that 90s like lush style video that has like those bright lights on the band um, (laughs) like one big bright light that looks like water Um, that's what I mean by like the early 90s kind of stuff gotcha I know um, track two especially, um, what was the comparison made? It sounded like Cocteau Twins guitars and Cure keys. Yeah, and there was there was Cure Essence in the first one as well, but not with the keys, with the vocal style, I felt. Um, I felt the vocal style was there in that first track. <clears throat> um, the third track I think might be my favorite. The second and the third track. I got to um, the third track, Pretty Something Never Was, and was really surprised. I was very, very caught off guard by it. It was a lot harder than I usually expect A Starry Night to sound. Yeah, and, and I It wasn't really a hard appreciated... song, but it was I really harder. appreciated that each, uh, each track is like its own personality. Mm-hmm. Like they were different in that way. Um, but yet, with the lyrics, they're super visual like super dramatic like another gloomy day touch of raindrops pain you know like that's what you expect with the starry night like Mm -hmm. theatrical um this one this song is it like um you could tell you singing she's he's singing about a witch you know and mentions her um on a she glides her broomstick through the spooky trees like pure halloween so it's all about like the romanticism and the fantasy of a witch girl uh, or of witchcraft. <clears throat> so I think I saw a lot of those elements in like the Capulet Loves Montague music video. Um, so you have a lot of like occult imagery and, um, and witchcraft and all of that, but not in the heavy sense, you know, more in the mystical, magical, whimsical sense. More in the Christmas sense. Yes, 
Yes. So like a Christmassy, starry nighted witch evening. You know? Mm hmm. Um, Capulet Loves Montague is a single that was dropped um, since January, I think. And yeah, it's, it's been a minute. It's been a while. So um, I've gotten used to that, but that has one of like my favorite lyrics ever. Is it cats are, are made from snow? Yeah, Christmas trees are frozen spiders, cats are made from snow. You know, <laughs> so like lyrics like that, like they just get stuck in your head and you're like seeing a visual and you know that's what Michael has in his head. It's just making you like daydream. Um, but there's a kind of um, levity to, to all of it where um, while it's, there are some songs that have like some severe sadness to it, um, there's still like a bright side to it, I think. Um, that pretty something that never was, like one of my favorite lines there was, she tore my fuzzy sweater, sever ties forever, balloons hidden are prophecies of doom, I'm doomed. So it's just adorable. 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 <laughs> um, more gloomy in Gloomy Witch. Um, gloomy Witch, um, I, I kind of compared to Capulet Loves Montague. Uh, it really stands out in the chorus. I, I really love how the chorus is um, multi layered and you can hear the harmonizing because, um, like, Michael's voice is one thing, but when, when it's like wrapped in. Uh, like more wave or like reverb and um, oh, like in the the Twin Tribes remix of Gloomy Witch, yeah, or like a backing vocal, it just sounds fuller. Like it sounds, I, I don't know. Like you said, like more. What's another way for more full? I don't know. I don't know how to describe that. Uh, robust. Robust. Sure. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more confident, if you will. So I really like um, those multi-layers. And that Twin Tribes remix, it is more reverby. Like the vocals are more re reverby. Is that a word? I, I think reverbed is reverbed. a word. I don't know if reverby is a word. Reverbed, okay. Um, yeah, like Michael's in the back of a mall uh, uh, food court. <laughs> singing there's nobody else in the mall it's just he's on the other side over by the popeyes and uh and we can just hear his voice just echoing bouncing it off. has to be a popeyes with you doesn't it it has to be a popeyes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i actually did really like the, the, the amount of reverb on the twin tribes remix i thought that that was really nice and uh there is another remix at the end called uh the weisberg Visborg. Visborg? Visborg. Okay, remix of Dearly Beloved. Um, Dearly Beloved came out, I think, even earlier. Yeah, that was a, um, I think that was a single from uh, mid-2019. And uh, and this was a really neat, um, like a dancey remix. Not not dancey so much, but it was it was a little bit punchier. And I really enjoyed that. Let me see if it says here. Yeah, Dear Dearly Beloved came out in July of 2019. So uh, uh, that rounds out the um, the album. It's very short. It is very short, but it has it packs a lot of variety. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think this is a great effort um, from the boys. Um, the boys. The boys. Yeah, Howard, Ilya, the cute one. What's his name again? Is it Daniel? <laughs> Sorry, the cute one. They're all cute. They're all cute. But the cute one that we never see. Yeah. Um, Michael's rolling his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, gosh. I know who you're talking about. It just took me a second to f remember and figure that out. Oh, I hope that isn't over OBS. But um, I'm not sure when this video is going to go up. Um, but if the album is not out yet on uh, Bandcamp, you can listen to a live stream of it uh, through Cult Nation, yeah. CVLT Nation, and there's um, there's a neat little uh, article attached to it as well.
Yeah, and but- the band is coming for Absolution Fest 2020. Please cross your fingers and your toes that they are coming to Tampa to perform for our fest. Yeah, and that'll be really great. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing some of these songs live. Like I said, like I, I really think that this is a Starry Night's best work to date. I think it is as well. Yeah. I think it is. Um, there are some standout singles on previous albums that I still spin when I DJ. <clears throat> so I'm still trying to decide which ones of these will be best to spin for people. Um, but we'll see. Capulet versus, you know, not Capulet versus Montague. Capulet loves Montague um, is a fun one. Well, Just we'll go. have to try a bunch out and see what sticks. <gasps> see what we want to move to. <laughs> But um, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our rambly review um, of A Starry Night's upcoming album, Here Lies, out May 8th on Negative Game. Cool. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. This is-